Today we're going to talk about combining and distributing terms. Um, and the, the difference between today and yesterday um, is really the big fact that we're not going to have equations this time, so there's no equal signs. And so we're just trying to simplify. If, if a math thing does not have an equal sign, what it is called is this is called an expression. And so we're just going to try to simplify these expressions as much as possible. Now when I look at this expression, and we've worked at some expressions with order of operations, we look, we use PEMDAS. And the biggest issue that we run into this time for PEMDAS is we need to do parentheses first. So we go in here and we look in here and we need to do x plus 7. Well, I don't know what x plus 7 is because I don't know what x is. So we really can't add these two terms together. And since we can't add these two terms together, we can't do that first operation. So we need kind of this, this skip step or another operation that would allow us to move forward with this problem so we don't just have to look at this and say, oh, can't do anything. That operation is called distributing. And what distributing does is it takes this outer number and then instead of just multiplying it by what comes out of this expression, we multiply it by each thing in the expression to kind of make sure that all the terms are included. So I don't just I do three times x. And again, we don't know what 3 times x is, so we just kind of put it together. And then we do 3 times 7, which that is 21. And that would be my final answer. Now you notice how I wrote 3 times x here. There's a really kind of a shorter way of writing 3 times x. You could also write 3 times x as 3x. So it's, it's known in math that if a number is pressed up against a variable, that that means it's multiplication. Let's look at a couple more of these. Okay, so again for this one we have to do what's inside the parentheses first. I don't know what x minus 5 is, so we're going to use distribution to kind of shortcut it. We have to distribute there, distribute there, to all the numbers to the inside. So this would give us 2x minus 10 plus 4. And now we can treat this like normal. Um, so I can't subtract 2x minus 10, but I can do negative 10 plus 4. And negative 10 plus 4 would give me negative 6. And again, we can't do 2x minus 6, so we just leave it, and that's our final answer. Let's look at another one. This thing looks more confusing because we've brought in more terms but it actually is just as easy as it was before. We can't add any of these things because they're not like terms. 2x and 4y are different, and we don't know what x and y are. So we're going to take the 3 and we're going to distribute it. And again, it's got to go to everything on the inside. So we're going to do 3 times 2x, which in this case you just multiply the numbers and get 6x then 3 times 4, which will give you 12y, and then 3 times 2, which will give us 8z. And again, we can't add any of those things together, so that is our final answer. This is probably one of the hardest problems that we'll get to in distributing. And the reason for that is, again, we can't add 2x plus 4, so we need to distribute, but when I distribute, there's no number in front. Like this 5 is way in front and you can't distribute it across because it has a sign in front. So in this case, what we end up doing, if there's no number in front, is we distribute this negative sign, which really counts as negative 1. So we're going to distribute that to both of the inner things. So we're going to get 5 minus 2x minus 4. And then we're going to combine like terms again. So we can combine the 5 and then negative 4. And that will give us negative 2x. And 5 minus 4 is positive 1. 
and that is my final answer. Let's look at another one. Now this distribution just has a lot of different things to it, so let's kind of break it down. Again, we'd want to do what's in the parentheses first, but we can't because x and y's can't add together because they're not like things. So we're going to take the number in front, and we're going to distribute it to both the inside stuff. Um, this part's easy. 3 times 2 gives you 6. Now we really have x times x here. And hopefully, like you've worked with some exponents, like we've talked about a little bit in the past, that like 2 to the 3rd means we do 2 times 2 times 2. Well, in this case, if you have x times x, we could really write x times x as x to the second, because we're timesing the same thing over and over again. And how many times are we doing it? Well, it's 2. So that's how I get my exponent there. Now we'll do the same thing with the y's. So we'll go plus, and then we'll have 9x times y. Now, x times y, it can't be simplified, so we just have to rewrite the same thing. Let's do this with the other distribution. Again, for this one, we would get 6y times y. And again, since they are the same, we can write that as 6y squared. And then we're going to do 2y times 2x which will give us 4xy, Oops. and in that case, they're different, so we can't combine them, so I get 4xy. Now we're going to look across and see if there's any like terms. Well, that's not a like to that, so I can't add them together. That's not a like to this, so I can't add them together. That's not a like to this. But we do have an xy here and an xy here, so they are the same. So we could count up how many xy's we have. I have 9xy's here, I have 4xy's there, so I will have 13xy's. And that would be my final answer. With this distributing talk, we've really talked about combining the like terms. Um, you want to combine things that that are the same because we just count up how many there are. But just let's just look at one or two examples of these. Okay, so we're going to simplify this expression by combining like terms. What I like to do first is try to match up my pairs. So I have an 8x here and a 4y there. So I can combine these. I have 8 here and 4 here. So that would give me 12 x's. Then I try to match up my next thing. So I have negative 3 y's here. Always include the sign that's in front of the number with it. So you have negative 3 y's here. You have negative 7 y's there, which would give you a total of negative 10 y's. Then we'll go over here. I have 6 here, and I have 2 here. And those are just whole numbers, and that would give me 8. And again, we can't add these together, because really we're not adding them together. We're counting up how many we have. So if you have 8 positive x's here, and 4 positive x's here, you have 12 positive x's. I can't do that with these two things, because I can't say I have 12 x's and negative 10 y's, and that equals 2. I, to what? I don't know. I don't know what kind of unit to attribute with it. So you just have to make sure... Um, when you're combining like terms, they have to be the same. Let's do one more example. So in this one, it looks really complicated again, because we have a lot of variables, but it's not. You just look to see which ones have the same units. 3xyz and negative 4xyz are the same. This one has different variables with it, so it has no partner. And then we just combine these things. So I have 3xyz's here. I have negative 4xyz's there. So in total, I have negative 1 x, y, z's, and these cannot add together. So that is my final answer. These things can look really, really messy, 
um, but that is fine. If you have any questions, let me know.